So, Sitze, it a, has been a great pleasure to travel uh, an important part of Sweden's 18th century organ landscape this last week. And we are now at the end station in Husby, uh, in Dalarna. And um, you, we have um, listened to you play organs of different traditions in our country. And, and I'm just curious to hear a little bit about your impressions in general. And that, perhaps a little bit more in particular. So. Yeah, I had a very great time. Um, I wasn't sure what to expect because I didn't know that much of the organ tradition here. So for me it was just a nice surprise to go to every organ and just see what happens. And uh, that's really a wonderful experience because there was so much difference between the organs but also things that you could recognize after a while. And that actually made it really worthwhile to, to get to know these organs because it's a complete new world in some aspects recognizable from my history but also some complete new things. So yeah, I really enjoyed it very much. Great. And, and we started in the Schöning Harriet, close to um, Borås Ulvisaham, not too far from Göteborg, where we have an organ by Johan Niklas Kama. Mm -hmm. And then we went through Östergötland up to um, uh, Uppland mm -hmm. and Lövstabruk with the famous common organ. And then we saw smaller instruments of his um, uh, students, we could say, apprentice journeyman, foreman, Olof Hedlund, Björklinge and uh, Olof Schwan mm -hmm. in the next generation in Hökuhud. And now we came here to um, uh, Husby where Niklas Söderström's organ was another Stockholm school, we could say, mm -hmm. uh, instrument. So, if we just start with you and Niklas Kama, uh, how, how, how did you, uh, uh, re what did you recognize? Or how would you describe his style, his instruments? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, I knew that name because uh, that's a very famous name, and I knew it came more or less from the Schnitke tradition as well. So I was really curious: uh, would it really be the same or really different? And of course, you recognize some of the North German characteristics. I mean, you have the, the strong principal chorus, the colorful flutes, and especially the wonderful reeds. I always love it uh, when you have organs in the North German style that the reeds mix so well with the other stops. They are not incredibly loud or overpowering the entire organ. It's always a very nice mix and always different types that you have the, the small, uh, very poetic reeds and the, the stronger trumpets. So that was something I immediately recognized. But for example, the, the chairs mixtures were something new for me because they come much later in the Netherlands and in North Germany. Then you are already way into the 18th century, uh, at the end of the 18th century actually, when they start building them in the Netherlands. And uh, that's really part of the, the congregational singing organ that you want to have a big chairs mixture. Uh, and here they were in all the organs. So for me that was a, an interesting surprise and a, a difference. Um, but further, you could really recognize the style and also the development that it gets more and more from the typical baroque sound to, to the more um, lovely sound that you get more eight foot colors and things like that. So yeah, it was a really nice development that I could see during the trip. And when, when we came to this instrument today, um, by Sir Dostum here, uh, you still recognize common features in this instrument, but there's also something new. Uh, yeah, the, the, the funniest part for me was when you look at the facade, you expect actually a, a, a romantic organ because this is not at all something that you would consider being uh, an older organ because the aesthetics of the, 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 the facade of the organ are typical for the romant romantic period already. Um, but then again, the sound indeed has still this very colorful aspect that you don't see in romantic organs that often. Um, the eight foot stops all have very different characters, they, they mix very well and at the same time you still have a, a strong principal chorus that's very clear actually. So yeah, a very nice combination of all the styles and, and already the beginning of beautiful, uh, wide, broad eight foot sounds that you expect in later times. So yeah, a beautiful tradition. And this organ here was built in 1783 mm -hmm. and that is the same year as the Per Jolin organ in Slok, which mm -hmm. was your first instrument by 
the Linköping Österdagbilder no. Persolin. And I remember when you came to Slaka, it also had a, 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 a facade architecture with arcade. And, mm -hmm. and, and, but you, the sounds were, it was a new world. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was really special. Uh, I had to, to get my head around the fact that you see something else uh, as what you hear. It's really different. Um, so, but especially those colors, uh, they come out so strongly in the, the speech of the pipes. It's really different than what you would expect when you look at the organ, but that's actually what I liked. You, you have a very strong character, and for me that's always a good sign. The more character the organ has, the more beautiful it is, actually. And, and uh, after this first chilling organ, the next day we went to Gammalschild, mm -hmm. which is like Löfstadbruck, the flagship of that tradition from Östergötland. And, and um, there you had a two manual and pedal organ, mm -hmm. even with a in the pedal, a Dulcian A, yep. and a Borufluid, a one foot. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> well, that's something you definitely don't expect on an organ from that period. There is a one foot flute in the pedal. So, yeah, quite special, a kind of a combination of traditions that you won't expect. Uh, and also, well, we had some very nice discussions about it, uh, the, the speech of the pipes in combination with the, 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 the tone of the pipe. For me that was really an eye-opener because you have lots of discussions always, what should the speech be, should it be as loud or softer or slow and actually I never thought of the combination to, to combine speech with the, the actual tone of the pipe. Normally you see it as a little extra and actually if you combine the two then it makes sense and that organ was the perfect example that it does make sense actually. Yeah, yeah it's, it's this, you have a, a very clear speech and, yep. and, and diverse speeches and different stop strings, different flutes, yep. and, and, and then you have this uh, uh, little bit noise, we could say, mm -hmm. sustained sound. Exactly. Yeah. Which yeah, what I especially like normally when you have a strong speech, um, the blend is not always as good. And here the, the blending of the stops were, was perfect, and you also had that speech. So that was really something new for me that I really liked. It had to grow on me, but the more I played it, the more I found it really beautiful. And then you also had string stops, viola gamba 8 and viola gamba 4 no. in the uh, Oberwerk. Yeah, there are endless combinations. Uh, you can make so many colors with all the different scalings, the different speeches. Yeah, it, it really brings a lot. Yeah. And then the next day we came to um, Trysum, mm -hmm. the furthest south organ. Mm -hmm. By and that was an interesting instrument. It looks like something else than it is, doesn't it? Or yeah, it, it's a small four-foot Hauptwerk, so you expect a kind of small organ, but it, it sounded huge in the church, and of course the acoustics uh, were really good in that church, so that makes a difference as well. But to have a small four-foot organ with a big eight-foot pedal, um, yeah, the sound was spectacular. So yeah, I really enjoyed that organ very much. And, and the pedal also had reeds. Yeah, well, the complete. Um, complete setup with yeah. a 16 foot and an 8 foot trumpet that he usually didn't fit with there. Yeah. yeah, so actually it's a very good idea if you don't have that much money not to spend money on a second manual but to have a huge pedal. I mean, if the first purpose is to accompany the congregational singing, that's the best way to go, of course. And this is something you. Um, um, repeated and made us aware of and gave us opportunity to experience just the nature of these instruments as accompaniment instruments yeah. for congregation and song. Yeah, that's of course the, the upside of improvising. You just adapt to the organ you're playing and you let the organ tell the story instead of coming with books and decide I want to play this piece and then discover, well, it's probably not the best piece for this organ. I just have to adapt to the organ. And, uh, that's always an interesting journey. Um, not only in sound, but also in my mind. Um, I, I see a stop, I hear a stop, and I think, okay, what can I do with this? And you know, then you have to come up with something creative and see what happens. And well, it was really a beautiful journey. And these organs all had something special to tell. And well, hopefully it worked that I was able to bring it out because especially those typical things of not having a second manual with a big pedal or having solo stops in the pedal, that makes it so special. And, and uh, like you said, organs have stories to tell. And, and like here in Husby, uh, we always had people who welcomed us and took care of us and mm -hmm. told stories about the organs. Yep. And I remember the first stop in Schöningarried, the faces of our hosts 
and the ears, their appearance. When you play Einfeste Borg. <laughs> yeah, I was just looking for a well-known hymn and I thought let's surprise them with something that they know. And it sounded so well on that organ. You can tell, every organ actually we visited, you can tell that it was designed for hymn playing. It's, it's so wonderful when you have this full sound, uh, sometimes with a huge pedal, even the, the one organ with a 12-foot quint that you have, a, a huge sound that supports the singing so well. Uh, you can just tell that's the first purpose of these organs, most definitely. And that was the organ in Rakhdestar, yeah. actually organ, his last instrument, yeah. Yeah. where you have this 32-foot possibility. To exactly. Yeah. And here in Busby we have this very low mixture and Sesquiatra, which also gives... Yeah, also nice. something very special. Not only a very low fifth in the mixture, but also a very low chairs, uh, the, the, the third. So that was a very special thing to hear. And also, for the first time, the, the name Sesquiatra. So I thought, finally, we have the Sesquiatra. But then it turned out to be actually kind of a chairs mixture as well, because you couldn't use it as a solo stop. It was really meant to be in the full sound of the organ. But very effective again, especially when you play in octaves, uh, a hymn melody, and it, it comes out very clear. So it's not at all uh, for, for playing a fugue or something, but definitely for big chords and doubling things. That makes a huge, impressive sound on an organ like this. And um, almost all of the instruments have wind supply systems preserved. Also something that you find very rarely, of course. Um, I mean, I don't know that many organs where the, the, the bellows are fully in function. And actually, we, we discovered, of course, during the journey that in most of the, the cases, it sounded much better when you pump the bellows. So it really makes a difference if you have the engine, sometimes the, the pressure is a bit too high or there is some kind of troubling noises in the wind. And then when you pump the bellows, you suddenly think, yes, there is, it's more easy going. There is, well, it breathes more. Um, so yeah. A breath. Yeah, a natural thing, actually. Yeah. 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 And that's also what we felt when you played the hymns, you know, that kind of natural congregation of singing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, so many people, we uh, uh, experience this as particularly attractive. Mm. And, and uh, everybody wants you to come back. Well, I'm <laughs> most happy to. I enjoyed it very much. <laughs> to to uh, make your music and, and, uh, and um, make us sing the hymns with these wonderful instruments, oh. voices of Swedish 18th century organ culture. <laughs>